first things first, let's start off at the top of the order, start off at the top of the question. We have Jael presents to physical therapy status post right femoral neck fracture with an ORIF. All right, or O R I F. During the gait assessment, the patient demonstrates a diminished backward rotation of the pelvis on the right when compares when compared to the left. Which of the following findings will most likely accompany this clinical picture? So we have A, excessive plantar flexion during mid stance on the right. B is lengthened step length on the left. C is shortened step length on the right. And D is diminished left trunk rotation. So again, what, what, what are we looking at? What's this right answer going to be? All right, again, I always get used to get really flustered with these gate questions uh, st- until I started to really break these puppies down like we're about to do now. All right, so let's start off at this top part. So we have this patient coming into us post Status post right femoral neck fracture with an open reduction internal fixation. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with that ORIF, you know, that's a, a surgical procedure where we're using plates, nails, and screws in order to align the bone and allow for heating, healing. So it's, it's a guiding procedure that's surgical in nature. All right. So she had the fracture. We have the open reduction in internal fixation. Cool. That's straightforward. Let's continue. It says, during the gait assessment, the patient demonstrates diminished backward rotation of the pelvis on the right when compared with the left. Now, this is really important. We got to slow down for a second. We got to think about this because what does this really mean? This whole backward rotation of the pelvis. This can be confused because there's different planes of motion you know, when we're talking about the body, right? The sagittal plane, the transverse plane, the coronal or frontal plane. So what are we talking about when we're saying backward rotation? So we have to really define what it is that we're talking about, all right? So y'all know of the anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. That's what we tend to talk about, right, most often. Well, that's in the sagittal plane, all right? That that's That's a sagittal plane motion. Most of us are familiar with that. So that's anterior and posterior pelvic tilting. Now you're also going to have in the transverse plane, all right, you're also going to have this thing called backward and forward rotation of the pelvis. All right, so that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about the transverse plane, not the sagittal plane. All right, and you all also may know of when we're tilting the pelvis side to side, Right, moving more in that coronal or they call it the frontal plane, you might know that as pelvic hiking. Right? Pelvic hiking. All right, so that's the other plane. So we have anterior and posterior pelvic tilt, forward and backward rotation of the pelvis in the transverse plane, and then we have pelvic hiking or pelvic depression. All right, so those are the motions. But for this specific question, we are talking about that backward rotation of the pelvis on the right. So it's having difficulty rotating backward. Now, before we move on and start looking at the question stem, there's something else I gotta say. I gotta say something else. We have to understand why backward rotation is even important to begin with. Why do we even care that there's a problem with backward rotation on the right? Well, I'll tell you this. During gait, you have to know when is my patient supposed to be doing Backward rotation. That's important. All right. Backward rotation is the most important during terminal stance on that side. So really what this question is saying to you right now is your patient, Jael, is having problems with terminal stance. She's not able to go in the terminal stance. That's what this is saying. Did you have that? Did y'all see that? I want to know. Did you come to that same conclusion? All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Now having that information, we can move down the line. It says, which of the following findings will most likely accompany this clinical picture? So all we're looking for is which one of these is going to be consistent with a person who is unable to go into terminal stance on the right or have difficulty going into terminal stance on the right. That's what I'm looking for from you. 
All right. So let's look at our first answer of A. A says excessive plantar flexion during mid stance on the right. Let's slow up for a minute. Excessive plantar flexion during mid stance on the right. When would you see something like that happen? When and why? All right. Excessive plantar flexion is a strategy that people use in order to clear the opposite limb. It's called vaulting. Right? You typically will see this happen when someone is trying to clear the opposite limb because the other limb's too long. So they prop themselves up on to uh, their toes on the stance side, and then they clear the limb. So it's a strategy we use. So in other words, A is more along the lines of vaulting. That's when you would see something like that. Foot clearance. There we go. I see you, Katie. All right. So let's go ahead and put a put an X uh, over A, A is, is not likely to be our answer. We wouldn't most likely see this. All right, let's look at B. B says, lengthen step length on the left. Okay, so this is where we got to slow up because you have to understand what step length is first. We have to understand that, all right? And so uh, when you're talking about uh, the step length, you're talking about heel strike to heel strike all right, of your lower extremities. So if this was right heel strike and this was a left heel strike, the distance between these two would be called a step length. And so you may ask the question of, well, is that a right step length or is that a left step length? Well, it's named by the swing leg. It's named by the leg that come, is coming out. All right, so that would be known as a left step length right there. Just to clear the air right now, just to make sure everybody's on the same playing field, this is what a step length is, and this is how you name a step length. So that would be a left step length. We all good? So let me go ahead and erase that. We don't need that right now. Let's now take a look at B. B says lengthen step length on the left. All right, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. When the right pelvis is going into terminal stance, or I should say that right leg is going into terminal stance, what is your left leg doing? What's the left leg doing during that time? You have to know this. If the right leg is moving into terminal stance, what's the left leg supposed to be doing? Well, the left leg should actually be in swing, going out into uh, where you're going to start contacting, so getting closer to that terminal stance phase, getting closer to initial contact. We're really trying to bring that leg all the way out. And so, the, so here it is. If we are limited on the right, we're not able to go far into terminal stance, well, then the right leg has to come down quicker. All right, so let me, let me draw that out for you. So if I hit with my right heel here, all right, and then we said that this was a left step length, right? So if this is the left side, this is the right. What I'm telling you is that the left step length, the distance that you can bring that leg out, depends on how far you can bring the right leg back. If you can't bring the right leg back very far, the left foot has to come down a lot faster, has to come down quicker. And so really this is opposite of what we would think we would actually be thinking that you would see a shortened step length on the left, not a lengthened step length on the left. All right, so we can get rid of B. B's not making much sense here. I don't expect to see that. It's opposite of what I would expect. All right, let's look at C. C says shortened step length on the right. Well, here's the deal. What determines the step length on the right then? Okay, so we know that we don't have a problem with, with, with the left side. The left side's fine. It can go into terminal stance just fine, so that's not going to limit it. Nowhere in the question did it say that she's having a problem doing a, 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 a anything with the hip, really. I know that there's a fracture, but in the question, it doesn't say that the, problem, the person's having a problem with hip flexion. It doesn't say that she has weakness. It doesn't say she has difficulty rotating the pelvis forward on the right. It doesn't say anything like that. So really, there's nothing that is affecting the right step length. Nothing. So what it really would come down to is, is there a problem with the left terminal stance, the left leg going back into terminal stance? And we said no. 
It says nothing's wrong with the left leg. No problems there. Okay, cool. The other way in this scenario could be if there was a problem with forward rotation of the pelvis on the right. That's not a problem either. Doesn't say anything about that. It says backward rotation is the problem. That's the diminished part. And so C does not make sense either. I would actually expect the the right step length to be somewhat normal. I mean, longer than longer than the left. All right. So C doesn't really fit right now. But as always with these types of questions, what I do is I slow up a little bit and I make sure, okay, I know I just eliminated A, B, C, but I need to make sure that I'm comfortable with D. I'm confident that that's the right answer. So let's go ahead and visit this one. It says diminished left trunk rotation. All right. So before we dissect this one, you have to understand, well, what's the relationship of trunk rotation and terminal stance? That's the easiest way to look at this one. What is the relationship between your trunk rotation and your terminal stance? All right. And so the way that this works is that if the right leg is going into terminal stance, right, it's going back, the rotation is going to go to the opposite direction. So every time the right leg goes into terminal stance, the trunk rotates to the left. If the left leg goes into terminal stance, the trunk rotates to the right. That's how that process works. If that's not, you know, understandable to you, again, gait is one of those things that you have to try. You have to, you know, give it some opportunity to really sink in. Get up, try it for yourself. All right. If your right leg goes into terminal stance, the trunk rotates to the left. When the left leg goes into terminal stance, the trunk rotates to the right. All right. Little opposite motion there. So here's the deal. With that being said now, what did I tell you was the problem? We said it was diminished backward rotation of the pelvis, which really means that the person has having difficulty going into terminal stance on the right. And what trunk rotation did we say goes with right, tr uh, right terminal stance? We said, we said that was what, y'all? We said that was a left trunk rotation. All right, so if I'm limited for the right terminal stance, that means I must be limited in my left trunk rotation. That's how that process goes. All you have to do is make the connection between terminal stance and the trunk rotation. Again, if the trunk, if you're going into right terminal stance, that means that's a left trunk rotation. But if my patient can't go into right terminal stance, they can't really go into left trunk rotation. So D fits. D is the answer. Diminished left trunk rotation. This one is tough, baby. This one is one that you got to spend time with. You got to work it. You got, But at the same time, in order for you to be confident in getting these questions correct and not get you know really flustered with these types of questions, you have to make sure that you understand normal gait. In order to be comfortable, you had to understand, well, if my right leg is going into terminal stance, well, what's my trunk doing? Or what's my other leg doing? You have to have that understanding in order to make great judgments here.